Well, isn't that the way to start off the morning with a slug row? Oh, I was in the double planted where that two rows are too close to each other, so you're jamming twice as much material in. Wasn't paying attention, driving too fast, deck plate's too tight. Perfect storm for a massive slug row unit. Luckily, it was only like a three minute unplug, but that was probably the worst one I've had this year yet. It's, this head is just pretty clapped out. She needs some severe work. There's no doubt about it. it the snap rollers, we thought we could get another season out of them. Should not have made that decision because I've been having a ton of trouble, especially on my out two, outside two rows where they normally are always in double planting on headlands. While this head is a 2014 and it's seen a lot of acres and a lot of double planting and they're pretty warm. So I'm really unsure of why it got so wet last night, but my goodness, the dew was just terrible. And so when you get dew on the corn plants, you can still combine, but the corn head starts picking early clean. And But what that means is the leaves stay on the plant and the husk that wraps the corn cob also stays on the plant. So then all you have coming in is the actual corn cob. That's actually really good for threshing and everything but your head loss probably doubles because you don't have that husk to take the blow of the corn head pulling the cob off of the plant. And so then when the corn cob hits the stripper plate, it just explodes all the corn off the end of the cob and then that kind of just falls through the corn head, through the stripper plates and you get a lot of head loss. So, geez, it hurt. What are you doing? Hey. <laughs> He's pointing at the case tractor, says it's junk. I got a lovely message on the screen that wants me to press OK to get rid of it. <laughs> Auto guidance failed. <laughs> Auto guidance failed. Uh, that wouldn't be the Pro 700 display, would it? Yeah, Pro of junk. <laughs> Pro of junk. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, I don't know if you can see it, but Look at how clean the corn head is. So you get two two things, the good and the bad. The thrush is really good. You can actually increase your ground speed, but then you gotta speed your head up and then you get more head loss, so you're kinda stuck at the same speed anyways, so it's kind of a wash. Well, look at this thing. How ridiculous oh, is that look? <laughs> you look like a fool with that thing on. Thanks, Eric. So I just got a headset because I'm sick of sitting with my shoulder up on my phone all day long because it seems like I'm always on the phone with somebody. So we are actually pulling out of this field. There's corn left standing, but it's different variety. Obviously, it's grass green yet, and it is four points wetter than what we have been combining, so we're going to let this stand a while, air dry a little bit main reason is to try to keep the grain dryer at an even moisture if we start dumping 20 percent in um, when we were combining 16 percent that's going to really throw off dad and trying to get a consistent 14 and a half to 15 percent coming out of the dryer so we're we're switching fields hopefully finding the same moisture that we were in the other half of this field was The question here is who's going to back out first? Oh, Randy, he pulled the trigger first. Dealing with uh, 12 rows and two grain carts heading at each other. Randy, put your auger back. We won't meet like this. Put it back. Well, sometimes when you're cutting across the other side of the field, you just gotta unload on it. Right, 
that old last night. Efficiency at its best. Although I do like when we unload on the headland. It's the only time that the combine has to follow me. I can drive wherever I want, and he's got to follow. Should we go left? He'll come with. <laughs> what are you doing? Seems to be plug. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't bring any gloves today. Yeah, where are my gloves? <laughs> are you a dog today, Brian? <laughs> This roll is roll roll has really been given issues. We think it might be the stock rollers are getting shot. Well pulls the stock down, but can't fix that right now. Too much effort, right? You gonna replace all your stock rollers this winter? I think so, and maybe a slip clutch or two on the outside two rows. They're like I thought they were like eighteen hundred bucks per set or something. No, I don't know. They're not cheap. This ain't cheap either. No, I know. Me watching you is pretty expensive. <laughs> what well, were we just talking about using gloves? I got a paper, paper slip, paper cut, corn leaf cut. I got a paper cut from a corn leaf. That ain't gonna heal for a while. It's right on the joint. That'll open up every time I move. All right. I've been called to inspect why the unload auger system on Randy's combine is making noises that shouldn't. You wrecked something? It just crushed the whole way system down onto the plating of the unload auger. Oh, that sounds exciting. He's junk. <laughs> you could hear you could hear the noises from your cab. Oh yeah. Because of these grain carts. I had to get such a big hopper, crushed it all in. You can't keep up. What is wrong with you? This is the I'm grain cart's fault. There was someone else messing up my system. I know. <laughs> I, I know. Well, there's the problem. It's too I, much. I found the issue. Yeah, that's, that's certainly junk. It's rubbed so hard that it's heated the metal up. Come on. Burnt the paint right off. Well, I took the tank was full as when it was squealing, so <laughs> we can bend it up. That's why I'm unloading you guys so frequently. <laughs> we take each end out, bend it back up. We're going to need some torching and reinforcements. That whole thing crushed? <laughs> it's crushed flat. <laughs> wow. What's the test weight? Probably 60. How many bushels do you hold when you're unloading on the go? Did I've you dump 625 bushels many times. <laughs> oh, my. Well, we're broke down. Well, that was the squealing. Yeah, I would imagine that that would be the issue. Looks like severe friction. Wow. Wow. Battery is under the hood. Unbelievable. The auger is salvageable. Yep. This piece needs some gusseting, severe gusseting. Well, this one's junk. Where's the loner? Yeah, we need a loner for when they keep breaking down. <laughs> well, out of all the things on a combine to break, that would have been the last thing I would have guessed that would have gotten crushed, bent, heated up. What else occurred there? Well, the clutch, I hope, didn't get too uh, overheated, but the Lancota clutch was taking her because it was overloading it, obviously, when the friction was happening. But now, Air Force One has got to keep up with uh, with two carts. That's going to be a push for the big girl. Well, I finished up the field. There wasn't two, two or three trucks left there, so I got that done. I could go to the next field, but I am actually gonna take this back to the farm. I got parts for those stock rolls, and we're gonna put those on quick tonight. And then I'm gonna put a different set of concaves in this combine. I wanna test them out, see uh, if we can get a little better throughput on this. We really don't need to, but uh, 
the main reason also is maybe better grain quality because it they're really grinding it this year and we got the concave at 39 open and then 280 rotor speed no losses out the back from the rotor that we know of but it's just a lot of ground up finds so we're gonna try a different set of concaves um, I talked to the guys about that at the company and they think that 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 this will help out so we'll see how this works we'll keep you updated in the next video about that but we'll see you in the shop well I'm into this project so far very simple just take off a, that stuff which is just like six bolts pretty easy take off the two thirty millimeter bolts out of the end here and then he says yeah just use an air hammer and pound these off it should come Otherwise, there's a puller for it. Well, the air hammer didn't quite work, so we're gonna use sledgehammer and see if that works. Mitch Trumbull won't answer his phone. He's buffering, buffering my calls now. Takes a posi lock puller and an air hammer, and well, uh, the posi lock puller I would not. Uh, guarantee you that every time it was pretty pretty snug in there maybe a smaller unit than this massive beast would fit better but deer also has a tool for it I believe one off one to go on this side All right, so I got the new on now. I think it's just to put the, uh, the special washer in there, tighten it up. I'm going to actually spin it over. I got the PTO shaft off, make sure it, I got it aligned properly so that it does not bind because that would be a depressing thing to fire it up in the field. And oh look, Chuck put it together wrong. I'm sure that's torque to spec. That's actually a very simple process. I got that all adjusted properly the way it's supposed to be to my best knowledge it's hot in here again I, this is the hottest fall that i've ever experienced it's beautiful but man it's hard to work in so i'm gonna speed this up do a little little fast forward motion here so you don't have to watch me struggle with the second row i'm gonna do both outside rows um that took about 35 minutes so this one should take 15. No, I doubt it. A little longer. Here's the uh, professional window washer. <laughs> Don't you dare show this. This is horrific. <laughs> Cover you want to defend yourself? Cover up by name. XL window cleaning in Prior <laughs> Lake. He, he always says it's hard, hard to clean round glass, but Impossible. you would think that a professional could do better. <laughs> Got the phone call. We need a grain carter. Then he forgets his nice, good stuff. He, he gives us all the used window cleaning stuff and it says, yeah, good. it's good enough for fire machinery. All right, nighttime fixing done on the head so in case for those that don't know how a corn head works your corn row obviously comes right here this is where your corn cob gets popped off it's the stripper plates there these are gathering chains this brings the corn cob into the auger which the auger brings it to the combine so corn stock comes in here it gets augered in and then these are spinning like this and it pulls the stock down as the stock is getting pulled down this is a chopping corn head so these are spinning like a lawnmower and slicing it I don't know I suppose into chunks like this pretty simple actually really simple and very efficient okay we're well into the changing of the concave the concave is what the rotor spins against to thrash out the corn which is inside here which we have gutted so this is where all the corn goes into and then grinds against this this is what we're swapping out we're swapping it out with uh, these concaves which actually look like pac-man's mouth 
Wouldn't you say, Duggo? Pac-Man? You like Pac-Man. Mayday, mayday, mayday. I need help. <laughs> and then also the grates that are back farther on the rotor are getting swept out. This is supposed to roll the uh, product a lot more, causing more threshing. So we'll see tomorrow when we get it out, but Doug was gonna single-handedly lift that in there for me. <laughs> and just like that, it's back together and I hope there's no tools left in there and I need a shower something absolutely horrible that's just something I suggest installing in the winter when it's blown off and power washed but we got her done there's the old stuff I hope this is gonna be beneficial because that was a lot of work and it's midnight now or 12.30 and I'm excited to see what this thing does tomorrow, but I'm extremely exhausted. So is Eric. And uh, I'll tell you if it works, and then I'll tell you the brand, because I don't want to be a hindrance or a um, premature on my opinion. So let's let's see what happens. So thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.